A political controversy was touched off this week when some congressional Democrats proposed reviving the Fairness Doctrine, which would require broadcasters to present opposing points of view. Critics say it's a way to use government to get more liberal voices on talk radio. To sort all this out, we're joined now by conservative talk show host Mike Gallagher, who's in Dallas, and the president of the liberal radio network, Air America, Mark Green, who's in New York. Mike, fairness sounds like a good thing, making sure that all voices, all sides get heard. Why are you against fairness? Well, right. I mean, who could be against a fairness doctrine? Well, it's one of the most unfair things uh, that this uh, country has ever has ever viewed, Chris. It's an antiquated 1949 dinosaur that would basically make radio stations try to keep up with conservative views versus liberal views. And frankly, it's just a, a transparent effort uh, by sort of whiny liberals to silence the opposition. They don't like the heat that they've gotten uh, from talk radio, particularly over the illegal immigration debate. Uh, talk radio has widely been credited with uh, sort of galvanizing the American public. And so liberals who don't like what we've accomplished in talk radio want to have the government mandate uh, speech. It's, uh, well, it's unconstitutional. Me, it's not American. L let, me, let me bring uh, Mark Green in there. Uh, there are 2,000 talk radio stations around the country. There's cable television. There's satellite radio, there is the internet. Don't liberals have plenty of outlets for their views without having the government mandate that they appear on radio? I don't want the government to mandate that. And in fact, the study, Chris, that launched, I think, this segment by the Center for American Progress this week did not conclude that we need the fairness doctrine. What it did conclude was two things. First, the 1934 uh, Federal Communications Act said that the public airwaves are owned by the public, unlike car companies, unlike newspapers, because it's a scarce spectrum. And, of course, you need government regulation to make sure that 10 companies don't try to sh share the same frequency. In exchange for that free public license, a broadcaster promises to have diverse views for diverse communities by having going through license renewal hearings. My goal, and the goal of that Center for American Progress study is, gee, if we're going to give this away for free, at least broadcasters fulfill your promise to hear both sides and have local hearings for license renewals. Right now, allow me this, three companies, for example, Cumulus, Salem, and Citadel, have 1,000 hours of conservative talk and zero of progressive. Listen, Mike Gallagher may be handsomer and smarter and a better talk show host than I. 1,000 to zero is not, Chris, fair and balanced. Well, it's owners Mark, engaging in their bias. Let, let's let Mike uh, in here. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, Mark, how many conservative views do you feature on Air America? I mean, Mr. Green, with all due respect, this sword cuts both ways. And if there was a return of the fairness doctrine, you'd be forced to hire me and, and people like me for 50% of your programming, which would completely alienate your audience. Mark, you know better. You know that it ruins your business model. This is like having the government mandate what should be said on the pages of the editorial board from the New York Times, it's, it's preposterous to suggest that the government should mandate speech. Let's face it, you guys just don't like the clout that we've established over the last decade, and you're trying to silence us. That's all My, the fairness doctrine is. Mike, I don't blame you for pretending that you didn't listen to me. First, I, I don't you. want the government... No, no, you didn't. I, a, I don't want the government to mandate speech, but if the current law says that you give away licenses on the condition that you have license hearings with local communities. So instead of the government dictating content, which we're both against, you have the right. audience dictate comment. And how can they you do. defend, one second, and how can you defend three companies that I just named having a right. thousand hours of conservative to well, zero for liberal. I work, I work for one balance? of those companies. I work for Salem. I, I'm one of those those companies you d you just derided, but the reality is the audience does d dictate the content. That's why you guys went bankrupt or headed into bankruptcy court the first time. People don't want to listen to liberals on the radio. Now you're trying again, and God bless you. I don't want to silence you, but the fairness doctrine would say we've got to have 50% views liberal, 50% conservative on a radio station. That's nonsense, and it shouldn't be regulated by the government in this any is way, the shape, third time form. this is the third time you said that we want the fairness doctrine the report doesn't say it nor do I in the 1940s well, I, 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 I don't 19... understand well, wait a, wait a second uh, mr. Wait. green let me ask you about that because 
first of all, I believed, uh, you, you told our people that you did support the Fairness Doctrine, but if, it, if, it, if you weren't going to do the Fairness Doctrine, what's the point of all this? I mean, I, 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 wait, let, let me just ask my question. Sure. It works better that way. If, 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 if you, uh, if, if some station doesn't have, has completely conservative talk and doesn't want to put on the liberal, then what's going to happen? They're going to lose their license? Uh, no, here's what happens. Under current law, you have to go back to um, We're a network. We don't own a station. Um, but if you're a local station, you have to go to the community for a license renewal proceeding because the government, and Mike doesn't disagree with this, has to hand out licenses. The audience will say, gee, I never hear my point of view. I'm a liberal. I never hear my point of view. I'm a conservative. How about some more diversity? The government has to allocate licenses. I don't so, like. But, but basically, I don't my like, point is, Mark, whether whether it's it's the fairness doctrine or government licensing, what you're basically saying is the government would force stations to have opposing points of view. Here's the goal. Obviously. Here's the goal. Stricter media ownership rules, so one station can't control half the market. It's called antitrust, Mike, which is a century old, and conservatives and liberals Mark. support it. I am against Mark. public censorship by government. I am against private censorship by companies who, Excuse like me. white baseball owners in the 1940s, wouldn't hire black players, even though it was in their interest. No, wait, 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 the owners wait, 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 of your station won't allow the other on. side on. Go ahead, Mike. Black baseball. Come on. I mean, you're, with all due respect, you're doing what Air America does on a regular basis. You're talking out of both sides of your mouth. Let me give you a little bit of logic, and let me give you a fact for just a moment. You're denying that you want the government to mandate speech on the radio airwaves, and then you turn around and you say you want to have government renewing license or not renewing licenses, the government, because the FCC is a governmental agency, the FCC regulates the airwaves, you know that, you want the government to step in and not renew a license because you don't have enough uh, liberal views on wildly successful talk radio networks like the Salem Radio Network, the one I work for. You can't have it both ways, Mr. Green. Either Mike, want the government to step in or you don't. Mike, Everybody on this program and listening agrees that the government has to allocate uh, spectrums because it's scarce. Otherwise, you have different... Scarce? You, yes, it is. And if you can set up a newspaper or an Internet company tomorrow without government <laughs> approval. But you can't have WNBC in New York have two people trying to control the same spectrum oh space. My word. What I want is... We have, by the way, the law requires... You don't want to say it. For 70 years, the law requires license renewal hearings, and we want... All sides heard, conservative let, let me, and liberal. Let me, let, guys, let me try to move this conversation because I think we're sort of repeating ourselves here. Mark Green, what do you think the effect of the dominance of talk radio, uh, and, and it clearly seems to be market-driven, they're just more successful, what has the effect of cons uh, conservative talk radio been on our democracy? It's good. More voices is better. But when you say it's market-driven, Chris, you're leaving out two things. When owners like the ones I cited have a thousand hours to zero, that's not market based. It's like Sinclair Broadcasting. They're, but they're wait a indulging you're, you're, in their preferences. Why do you think, why do you think, why do you think you went bankrupt and meanwhile a lot of the conservative talk show networks and stations are thriving? Is that Mike, not the market? You. Chris, I have good news for you. It took Fox News five years and $500 million of subsidy from Murdoch to be profitable. Air America in its third year is out of bankruptcy. Oh, and we're going to be more. Pro Excuse me, I just said you a guys, fact, Mike. You guys were selling. We're you moving. guys were selling the. You guys were selling the furniture Mike, to make Mike, your payroll. I'm sorry you, to you speak. guys hit a brick I'm wall. sorry to speak while you're interrupting me. <laughs> we are going to be profitable quick. We are going to be book. profitable. We are going to be profitable more quickly than Fox. Uh, and hey. so, uh, at the moment, we are now turning it around. But the issue hey, is. The issue is why some owners are scared of the other point of view, like Sinclair Chris. Broadcasting, right. like Cumulus, right. like We're like running Salem. out of time here. Mike Gallagher, Let I'm going to give you a 30-second last word. Go ahead, sir. You got it. With all due respect to Mr. Green's uh, radio acumen, I've been doing this since 1978. Back when he was, run when he was running for mayor and as a city councilman, I was in the trenches okay. doing talk radio. Never the a fact city is, liberals, the, the fact are, are running for mayor, the city council, <clears throat> the fact of the matter is, liberals don't succeed in talk radio across the board. I don't know why. It's been debated 
persecuted for years. The fact is, people don't want to hear angry liberals and talk radio. This is our medium. Good luck with your second go around with Air America, but you're going to go belly up again, and we're still going to be around, and the government shouldn't step in and tell us Randy, uh, what we all should right, say. Gentlemen, we're going to have to leave it there. But, Randy uh, Rhodes and Tom Harbin beat you when we're on air. Your owners don't want us to be on <laughs> okay, air. Okay, Mike Gallagher, I'm Mark Green, I want to thank you both. Wait, <laughs> now I understand. This, is, you, this is talk TV, and Mark, <laughs> I you. wish you every success in becoming as successful as Fox News. Thank you both thank for joining you. us today. Good luck. Up next, a quick break and a check of the day's other headlines from